Hello everybody, my name is Kimo Anojem and today we will be looking at dimensional analysis. We are going to review the chapter because you have a test coming up and therefore it is essential for us to look at the most important things that we have studied so far. Now, um, <clears throat> keep in mind that physics explains the world around us by identifying meaningful relationships that characterizes nature. Understand that relationships in physics are always evaluated in terms of physical quantities. A physical quantity is anything in science that can be measured. You already know that anyway. A physical quantity has a unique physical dimensions associated to it. Understand that physical dimensions used in this context has nothing to do with spatial dimensions. A physical quantity is anything in science that can be measured and therefore for every physical quantity we can assign a value to that quantity via some sort of measurement. So, in, 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 in order to conclude, keep in mind that physics is all about relationships. Physics is all about relationships. In other words, the primordial objective for this course is for you to be able to identify meaningful relationships between physical quantities. And for you to do that, dimensions or dimensional analysis will play a major role in this class. Physical dimensions generally is a generic description of the kind of a physical quantity being measured. Understand that it is a generic description of the kind of the physical quantity being measured. Every physical quantity has a specific dimensions. Let me say that again. Every given physical quantities have a specific physical dimension associated to it. And by dimensions, I mean the physical nature of that given physical quantity. In other words, dimensional analysis, I cannot overemphasize this, describes or basically is a generic description of the kind of physical quantity being measured. The physical dimension of a given quantity is usually determined by how that quantity is measured. Let me say that again. The physical dimensions of a given physical quantity is determined how that given physical quantity is measured. And to measure, we need to choose or define an appropriate unit of measurements. In other words, dimensions imply units, but units is not the same thing as dimensions. Let me put it this way. Units is not the same thing as dimensions. A system of units is a complete set of units that can measure any physical quantity in the universe. There are different systems of units. And it is important for you to be able to convert from one system of unit to the next. In this course, we will be dealing with the SI system of unit. Otherwise, known as the metric system, otherwise called the metric system. So keep in mind, if you want to make it in the exam, you should be able to convert from one unit system to another. You should understand what we mean when we talk about the dimension of a physical quantity. Now here are some common dimensions. The dimensions of mass is capital M. The dimensions of length is capital L. The dimensions of time is capital T. Velocity 
is defined as displacement over time, which means that the dimensions of velocity is the dimensions of displacement divided by the dimensions of time. This is L over T, which is basically L T minus one. This explains how I got this. So the dimensions of velocity is just LT minus one. So this table basically gives you the dimensions of some very common physical quantities that you will encounter in this course. Now it is not meant for you to memorize, though memorizing is important. You should be able to derive this the dimensions of these physical quantities. And quite frankly, it's easy. Take for example, force is defined as mass times acceleration which implies that the dimensions of force is equal to the dimensions of mass multiplied by the dimensions of acceleration therefore the dimensions of force is the is equal to m l t minus 2 which we can say that it is m l t minus 2 so this will give us the dimensions of force. Dimensional analysis. This is crucial in this class. And therefore, as your teacher and your mentor, I humbly advise you to take your time to understand the method of dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis will help you to determine how variables are related. Uh, this explains why dimensional analysis or the dimensions of a physical quantity basically tells you how that physical quantity is related to fundamental quantities. Let me put it this way. Physical dimensions will show you how a physical quantity is related to base quantities. We'll show you how a given quantity is related to base quantities. Now, it is important for you to understand that dimensional analysis will provide a way for you to track down what symbols mean through long calculations. This is particularly very, very useful. This is very useful for AP physics. This is very, very useful for AP Physics. At the same time, dimensional analysis will help you to understand the formulas that you're actually are using. In other words, it provides you with a means that will help you to understand the meaning of the symbols that you're using. And at the same time, it gives you a systematic process to track down the physical dimensions of every word, given quantity. Keep in mind, keep in mind that almost all questions in AP Physics, especially AP Physics 1, is purely algebraic. And for you to track down the correctness of your equation, for you to keep track of the meaning of all your symbols, dimensional analysis has to become your best friend because it will help you to determine the meaning of the symbols you are using and also to show you what that equation stands for. In order to use dimensional analysis as a problem solving tool, you must work problems using symbolic expressions. You must work problems using symbolic expressions rather than numerical values. Understand that physics is about relationships, not values. And when you jump straight away into values, you forfeit 
your ability to see how the relationships fit together and therefore limits your learning. Hence, I recommend that you should make it a habit to work problems symbolically, every problem, every time, no exceptions. Keep that in mind. Physics is simply about relationships. The whole objective of this course is so that by the end of this course, you should be able to determine meaningful relationships between physical quantities. And therefore, in order for you to do this, you need to practice solving problems the right way. And one of the means, or one of the how to solve problems the right way involves using symbolic expressions. Because using symbolic expressions will help you to be able to use dimensional analysis to track down the meaning of all the expressions that you've written down. So it is very essential that you understand this, practice it because this will be a life saver in this course. Here are some important properties for you to remember. Understand that when you can only add or subtract terms with the same physical dimensions or with the same units. It is critical you understand this. You can only add, subtract or equate two or more terms only if they have the same dimensions. As a matter of fact, you can never and you should never, you can never equate two things of unequal dimensions or unequal units. Or unequal units. Specifically for AP Physics C, when you differentiate or integrate a physical quantity, the result will have the same physical dimensions as the original physical quantity. Let me put it this way. When you integrate or differentiate a physical quantity, the results will have the same physical dimensions as the original quantity. Let's look at some sample examples. The question says, develop a model which describes the period of a swinging pendulum. Assume that the period T depends on length, mass, gravitational acceleration, and the amplitude theta. So we can see that T depends on length, mass, g, and theta. If you recall in class, theta is dimensionless. So T will be equal to L raised to the power X, M raised to the power y, g raised to the power z, and the theta. And keep in mind that theta is dimensionless. It's more specifically, theta is equal to 2 pi. So we can see that the dimensions of t will be equal to 2 pi the dimensions of L, all raised to the power x, the dimensions of M, all raised to the power y, and the dimensions of G, all raised to the power z. This would mean that capital T is equal to 2 pi, capital L, all raised to the power x, capital M, all raised to the power y, Lt minus 2 all raised to the power z. So we have t equal to 2 pi Lx my Lz t minus 2z. We have m and l here, but we don't have m and l on the right hand side so we could say that m is raised to the power zero 
L is raised to the power 0 T, all of this should be equal to 2 pi L X plus Z multiplied by M Y multiplied by T minus 2 Z. For the right hand side to be equivalent to the left hand side, their corresponding indices must be the same. This means that y is equal to 0, x plus z is equal to 0, and negative 2z is equal to 1. Therefore, z is equal to negative 1 half, and therefore um, x is equal to 1 half. If this is the case, then the period t will be equal to 2 pi L raised to the power 1 half multiplied by G raised to the power negative 1 half. Therefore, the period of a swinging pendulum is equal to 2 pi the square root of L over G. So using the method of dimensional analysis, we have actually de derived an expression that shows how the period of a swinging pendulum depends on the length as well as the acceleration due to gravity. Amazingly, it is independent of the mass of the object. It is totally independent of the mass of the object. Now let's look at another example. Let's look at another example we are to develop a model that shows how the centrifugal force of a particle depends on mass, velocity, and radius of a circular part. So the centrifugal force is a function of mass, velocity, and radius. So this means that F is equal to M raised to the power X v raised to the power y and r raised to the power z so the dimensions of force will be equal to the dimensions of mass raised to the power x the dimensions of velocity raised to the power y and the dimensions of radius raised to the power z the dimensions of force is m l t minus 2 so this is capital MX, LY, T minus Y, and LZ. Looking at the right and the left hand side, you can automatically see that X is equal to 1. Um, y plus Z is equal to 1. And Z is equal to... Uh, there should be instead let's go to the next page so you have um, let me let's 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 rewrite this again f is equal to m raised to the power x v raised to the power y and r raised to the power z, which implies that the, the dimensions of f is equal to the dimensions of m raised to the power x, the dimensions of v raised to the power y, and the dimensions of r raised to the power z. So, we have m, l, t minus 2, will be equal to m raised to the power x lt minus 1 raised to the power y and l raised to the power z so we have m l t minus 2 equals to m x l y plus z t minus y Looking at these two equations, you can conclude that x is equal to 1, minus y is equal to minus 2, which implies that y is equal to 2, and 
y plus z is equal to 1, which means that z is equal to 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Hence, the force F will be equal to M raised to the power 1, V raised to the power 2, and R raised to the power minus 1. If you want to rewrite this, F will be equal to M V squared all divided by R. So this is the centrifugal force experienced by a particle moving around in a circular part. Let's do another example. Now, the question goes as follows. Suppose that you are driving a van down a highway with gusty winds. Develop a model that shows how the speed of your vehicle affects the drag force you are experiencing. Hint, F is equal to K rho A Vx. Look for X where K is a proportionality constant. The question says that F is equal to K rho A V X and K is a proper this implies that the dimensions of F will be equal to the dimensions of K, the dimensions of rho, the dimensions of A the dimensions of V all raised to the power X. So we have here um, M L T minus 2. All of this will be equal to 1, the dimensions of K. Rho stands for density. So we have here M L minus 3 L squared. L T minus 1 all raised to the power X. So this is going to be M L T minus 2. All of this equal to M L minus 3 plus 2 plus X all multiplied by T minus X. Looking at this equation, automatically you see that x is equal to 2. Therefore, we can conclude that the drag force you experience is going to be equal to k rho a v raised to the power 2. That is the drag force you will experience driving down a road in gusty winds. Now, um, we have actually come to the end of this review. Please, your quiz will have questions on conversion of units, developing models, using dimensions and it will also have a lab. The lab will be to verify your model. It is always a pleasure developing these educational videos on your behalf. I hope that it is my hope and desire that these videos help you in your educational journey. Again, my name is Kimo Onojam, and my next lecture is going to be on vector analysis and on the mathematical methods for AP physics. Now, this topic will act like a bedrock that will give you the toolbox that you will use throughout this course in digesting and solving complex physics problems. Thank you.